Talking about LA, talking about stand-ups and talking about everything that's going on at the moment. Joe Rogan is leaving and going to LA. You heard about that, right? Joe Rogan is leaving. Joe Rogan has left the building. This is old news, but I thought I'd talk about it here now with you guys. So Joe Rogan's leaving LA. He's finally confirmed it. Rumors were swirling around the interwebs for a while because he did intimate a few things. If you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast for a while, you know he's always complained about the overpopulation in LA, the traffic issues, um, the homelessness problem. He's always kind of had a bit of an issue with it but the thing that's actually keeping him there especially when you consider um, the amount of resources that he has to just up sticks and go somewhere else is the comedy store and his circle of friends so recently he just decided i think off the back of the second lockdown in california or in la in california and the fact that they haven't really dealt with covid well there and there is no real prospect of them reopening uh the economy in la anytime soon and the fact that there was you know riots and protests going on all over the place he probably thought it was best time for him to up sticks and head off to texas um in order to kind of seek pastors new and maybe um you know birth a new scene there maybe open up a new club um whatever it may be um he's moving to la this is the article here from the blues it says um joe rogan host of one of the most popular podcasts on the planet um uh said that he decided to move to los angeles texas because he wanted a little bit more freedom rogan explained the decision behind his move during his podcast conversation with guest joe DeSena, the ceo and founder of spartan and the death race he says i'm out of here said rogan when joe DeSena asked him about moving he says i'm going to texas i want to go somewhere in the center of the country um somewhere it's easier to travel to both sides place to both places sorry somewhere where you have a little bit more freedom he says I also think that um, where we live right here in Los Angeles is overcrowded. And I think most of the time it's not a problem, but I think it's exposed in the fact that it's a real issue. And when you look at the number of people that are catching COVID because of this overpopulation issue, he says as well, when you look at the traffic and when you look at the economic despair, when you look at the homelessness problem that's accelerated radically over the last six, seven, ten years, I think there's too many people here. I think it's not it's not tenable. I don't think it's manageable and every mayor that does a shit job of doing it because I don't think anybody can do a great job of it. I think there's certain things you're going to have to deal with when you have a population of whatever fucking LA is, 20 plus million people. It's just too many people. It's just too many people. True. Um, I think I... I was um, a bit skeptical of this. I remember hearing him complain about this for a while, but then I had an ill-fated trip to LA when I went to go to the Golf Wang um, Festival in 2018. And bloody hell, just leaving the airport to get to downtown. Oh my God. And then downtown LA isn't like downtown in most places that you live in, in the United States, or that you would be... Uh, accustomed to the united states where that's kind of where all the bars and hangouts are downtown is basically where the homeless people kind of situate that's that's the kind of the derelict side of la it's really bizarre it's, it's a bit of a mind fuck but it took ages to get from la airport all the way until the hostel i was staying in um and then from there it took ages to get anywhere basically around la the only good thing about it at the time i remember is that even though there's a lot of traffic the ubers were ridiculously cheap i'm not too sure why maybe because it's a it's a driving city anyway so driving is a little bit of a commodity it's not as a big deal as it may be in other states but that was a big thing the food was flipping incredible but i did re i did actually see that especially when to, when you went out at night the 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 streets were packed with people packed with cars you know it's just an absolutely crazy place to live but of course, you know, if you're in the entertainment industry, being situated in LA, having everyone coming in for meetings and stuff is a great thing. I'm sure Joe's podcast has basically grown over the years, mostly due to his proximity of being in LA. Even though I'm sure he flies in a few guests that he wants to get in, but for the most part, most people are going to LA to do meetings, to do promo. They can easily swing by your facility and have a two hour plus conversation. So he's taking a bit of, a bit of risk to go to Texas in that regard. But I also think it probably that isn't that big of a risk now considering the amount of people that are relocating there's a lot of conversations about people leaving densely populated urban environments and kind of going a little bit out of the city maybe you know an hour or two hours outside of it just to kind of get a little bit more bang for their buck maybe to change of scene change of scenery maybe a change in career or maybe just a change in priorities right because some people are just basically saying hey i'm not going to work this 60 hour a week job working in this law firm i'm going to kind of reduce the hours a bit maybe volunteer or lend my services to a local council for four days a week making considerably less than i was doing but being a lot more happier because i got to spend time with my kids you get to spend time with your wife you get to spend time with your family whatever it may be right um i think that's going to happen so a lot of people are going to be looking at places outside of their major city especially if you live in a major city and going somewhere else but i think covid is either going to make you 
um, realize that you might need to move and get out of the city you're living in or it's going to make you really determined to take advantage of the city you live in, right? Because for all the people leaving, there's going to be a lot of empty spaces that you could also take advantage of and I'm sure landlords are going to be desperate to get people in there because, you know, there's going to be hardly anybody moving in there. There's going to be no one coming down for university terms, no one coming in for Erasmus, no kind of... Uh, placements and all that sort of stuff that they get money from no international students like it's going to be a lot of income those those um landlords are going to be missing out on so interesting development to see i want just to see how many other of those la podcasters are also going to move i haven't heard much from the comedians in new york most of those guys are saying they're going to stay or most of what i've heard from those guys that they're going to move out to new jersey uh, but for the most part they're not really taking they're not really going that further out from where they are situated anyway so, um, yeah, so let's see what happens, man. Um, I'm interested to see how the podcast goes. Supposedly, Andrew Schultz said that he was, he's already got a facility that he's got in place, which I'm sure he's just going to decorate. Because that's the thing that Joe Rogan's funny about. When he moved to this new facility he's got, he just basically copied the same decor from his old podcast to the new one. He, even the same table he got commissioned, or I think it's from the same person, the same curtain, the same uh, flag at the back or behind him as well. So he might do the same with the studio in Texas as well. Or he might just keep both spaces and kind of cycle through them, you know, uh, do a batch recording of uh, LA podcasts whenever the comedy store opens up. Who knows? Or he might open up his own comedy store. That would be a big deal, wouldn't it? Imagine that. 